say somebody's next to me and they're not a very good speaker and they're a little intimidated by standing up and talking in front of people. Are they allowed to say, hey, I'd like to give my time to this person so this person can speak for me? Um, I know it's done uh, at the federal level and the congressional level. It's done at all those meetings where you're giving up your time to somebody else. I'm wondering at this level um, if that's possible. Uh, usually, you know, for public comments, they give, they usually a lot, 30 minutes, a half hour, you know, most of the time our public comments are real fast, so I can't see any hindrance in that, but I guess that's up to the board. Um, I did do something, I'm gonna call it Full Hours House, and I don't know the address, but it's the house on Green Bay that I heard that we purchased that home, I don't know for sure, we gave it to a company. That company is gonna put green technology in there, whether that's heating, electricity, I suppose, probably solar on, on the roof. My question is this, how does that benefit the village? I don't know of any space in the village where homes can be built. Um, maybe one or two on open lots, um, but most of those are small. How does that benefit the village? Does it benefit that company that's doing that? Does it benefit other villages that may be building and they're gonna send people over to us to look at this house? But I'm thinking to myself, why would we do that? And number two, we're doing it in a residential area. On the east side of town, we only have four blocks that are residential. My block, um, uh, Bonner's block, and then the two blocks north of that. To me, a residential block means people live there. That's what you do. You don't put businesses. You don't put homes there. People are gonna be bringing, like that guy said, well, eventually we'll be bringing buses and school people to come view. And I'm thinking to myself, that isn't an area that you do something like that. There's no parking to begin with. Why would you bring buses and people in to view a home in our little community, why would this be done in a big community? Why did they focus on Burnham? Because it was easy, I don't know. I don't know the question for that. Um, my time up? Yep. 
there's boil order signs that are still in the village for about a month and a half now. I don't know why they haven't been picked up. People are passing by in club that works, everybody. Why they just sit there and somebody doesn't say, you know what, when the parkway, when there's a sign there, a sign gets snatched up. It doesn't sit around to work. To me, it's ghetto. Every time I see signs in the parkway, I think it's ghetto. The building sign is fine, but I think they should come off. Um, Excuse me. Sorry. You got to say every village, you know, every village employee pass by it. Everybody drives. They have to see those signs. Why they're leaving it there, I have no idea. Um, you're going to keep letting me go. I was wondering what happened to the community meetings. Uh, those aren't happening anymore. You know, I wasn't able to attend them all, but I thought those were a good thing. I think in light of uh, all the things that are happening with uh, the fund, the police, and the Black Lives Matter, and the attack against the police, I wonder why we don't have community meetings anymore. You know, they want to bring the society and people closer to police, but then we stop our community meetings. Um, I know that you know, the virus is going on, but you know, this was well before the virus that that stopped happening. Um, and there were people that would go to these meetings, not a lot, but maybe it wasn't uh, advertised or told to people as much. Um, is the guy that was running our water department from Harvey, is he still getting paid from the village? I watched all the meetings and I haven't seen him uh, been taken out or saying that he's not working for the village anymore, which makes me believe that he still is. I hope he's not because for the eight grand he's being paid every year, I don't know what the heck the guy could be doing for the village because I did that department by myself, let alone that guy, Brandon, maybe a couple other people. Um, and all these jobs, I don't see the you know, the flowers or anything like that. So it seems like they're doing less okay, than what I used to do by myself. Okay. 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 And who was our water works superintendent? Um, we're the one else having a public comment. Yes. Good afternoon. Good, uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Dear the Village of Burnham Trustees, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Dwight Young. I have been a resident and a homeowner in the Village of Burnham for the past eight years. I am a father and I have been a registered nurse in the state of Illinois since 2010. I am on the forefront every day fighting to keep people safe and healthy during this worldwide pandemic. Tonight, I come before you to fight for justice for myself. I have repeatedly attempted to deal with this situation myself with the village's water department with no availability. I have even solicited an assistant of an attorney to write to the village. The department never responded. I have reached out to the Illinois Commerce Commission only to find out that they do not intervene in the municipality's water services. I have read the village's ordinance about the provision of water services and find that there is no appeal process. I cannot find recourse for someone to review an unjust situation, which is why I'm here tonight to ask everyone to listen. Since 2012, I have paid my water services. From the very first water bill I received after purchasing my home in August of 2012, there was an estimate, estimated meter reading that was established. In fact, the second bill I received in November of 2012 stated estimate, need reading. For seven years, I was billed an estimated 18 to 40,000 gallons of water and each bill stated estimate for the meter reading. For seven years, an actual meter reading was not conducted. Each bill I paid, and even if I was late, I paid late fees. In June of 2019, I provided an actual reading of the water meter to the village. The difference between the water department's seven years of estimate and the actual reading I provided resulted in a $4,000 plus dollar bill. The $4,000, there is no way that I use this amount of water in one billing cycle, in each billing cycle. Every bill since August 2019 has reflected actual readings and each time has been less than 10,000 gallons of usage per billing cycle. This continues to this day. I was charged an average of 21,000 gallons of water usage for the seven years that show the, and, and when the actuals have shown less than 10,000 gallons per cycle. I am being told that I am responsible for the $4,000 difference between the village's estimates and the actual readings that were finally provided. 
As I stated, I have tried many avenues available to me. And each time I was told that I owe the money and no review of that decision has been taking place. I, I do not know what else measures to take but to go further. I do not owe this money and I'm now being threatened with disconnection. I have continued to pay the actual water bill each month. I am looking further to uh, investigating on the unfair $4,000 extra charge that was charged to me upon the village changing their water system. As a resident of the village of Burnham and an essential employee in the healthcare field, I deserve someone to listen and to review the facts stated. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. My name is Dwight Young. Are there any other public comments? My name is Maria Munoz, um, and I live in Calhoun. I just wanted to let you know that today's meetings online said that it was in the village hall, so that's why I was late. That's it. Any other public comments? I'm going to have a motion to close the meeting to the public. I'll make a motion to close the meeting to the public. Mr. Marshall, I'm going to close the meeting to the public. Do we have a second, please? Second. Second by Trustee Garcia. Would you like to take the roll? Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Rivera? Yes. Thank you. The motion to pass the meeting is now closed to the public. As far as, um, the meetings being videotaped and all of that, um, the meetings are being taped for political reasons. Um, there are people that's uh, trying to exploit the process, so this is uh, it's for that reason and for that cause. Um, uh, as far as any uh, shared time speaking, if it doesn't run over the time limit that we set, I suppose that might be something we can look at. The, um, today, some additional time was allowed. I did not necessarily go by the clock. Um, as far as the property on Green Bay goes, um, the property was not given to anyone. And the property has been in very bad shape for years. And no one said anything about it then. Now that it's going to be improved and it's going to be I saw it eliminated in the neighborhood, and people have things to say about it. Uh, so the property is not being given to anybody. It will be a living property, and it will stay as such. The other thing, as far as the board order sign, um, they probably should have been removed already, and I'm sure they will be removed. So, as far as Mr. Lewis goes, uh, his function, what he does for Burnham, Feel as it was when it started. Um, as far as any water bills go, 98% uh, of people who have issues with the water bill is mainly because they have not adequately kept up with the payment. Now, the village of Burnham has been too liberal in terms of uh, extending letting people go so, uh, so long with the water. I agree with that. But that's kind of been a, a shortcoming on the part of the village. So, uh, but the village does not want anybody else's money. The village wants the money that it is owed. The village of Burnham is not here to make money. The village of Burnham is here to offer services and they must be paid for those services.
I don't think it's a requirement right now, so that's why we're avoiding, you know, myself personally, I wouldn't want to be, you know, close to other people. I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, this has been done for a couple of years. Okay, so uh, the board meeting, uh, I think the last one was in, in, in March. It was right before this hit, the last community meeting. And at the appropriate time, uh, and if we feel necessary, then we'll do it again. If we feel necessary. Uh, so that is all that we have about those comments. So uh, at this time, I would have to say in the uh, in the men's report, I'd like to say that. Uh, Water meter uh, project is going very well. And as far as Mr. Mr. Lewis goes, I would like to say that Mr. Lewis has been a, a tremendous help to the village of Burnham. Mr. Lewis is the one that came in and introduced the idea for us to put together a plan for the village that we should get these water meters changed out. You know, we applied for the loan with the EPA and they kind of strung us along, you know, forever and would not give us the money. So we had to raise the rates. Uh, you know, proportionally higher, and after we got a plan for it, then we could go back and reduce the rate, so we didn't necessarily need, you know, the, uh, the long-term increase that we had put into effect, and that was just to make sure that we could pay the loan back to the EPA, and that still was not good enough, so I'm very appreciative of my administration, I mean, Robert Urban Post, and administration, and the staff, I'm appreciative for someone to come along and to, uh, to offer us a plan uh, to make sure we can get this project done. So right now, as we speak, Burnham is 93% done with the water meter project. If it had not been for Mr. Lewis, we'd be at zero percent today. We need to find you with the increase. We would have done it. The time is up. Sir. The time is up. No more comments. Um, Sidewalk uh, program is going, I mean, it's out for bid right now. Uh, we cannot, uh, uh, we will not be able to do every sidewalk that needs to be done this year. So, so we're going to do what we can. We, we did the one that was, that we felt was kind of critical, and we'll continue to work on the sidewalk until we can get them all done. And now we've got to the money. There are no more comments from it. You've already had your time. Just broken Please. curves. Just have to just tell me what broken curves. I called you back there, you never called me back. Well, why should I have to tell you I have a broken curve? Why should I have to tell you I have a broken curve? And if he continues to talk, I'm going to have to ask you to have him taken out. I'll send him back. I mean, the village of Burnham is uh, is looking for a code enforcement. I mean, also, the uh, position has been posted on my website. So all the interested parties are welcome to apply. And uh, so we can take a look at that. And also, we have not created another recycle day for electronic waste. So we're asking people, please do not put televisions in the alley because Homewood will not pick them up and we do not have a free way to dispose of them. We don't have a way to get rid of them. So please do not put televisions in the alley. And that's all I have. This time we're here with Fort and Clerk. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Just a reminder that the vehicle register, um, vehicle stickers have been extended to the end of September. You should have received a flyer and insert with your utility bill. In the back, there's information about the sticker. There are three options how to obtain your vehicle sticker, either by email, by the night drop, or by mail. Um, the cost of the vehicle sticker has gone down to $40. Last year was $45. Seniors and veterans are still discounted at no charge for their first sticker. The second one would be at $10. Um, and that is all I have. Well, thank you, Clerk Lewis, for uh, your report and that information. It's public education, health, safety, and welfare, trustee Grant. Greetings, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. It's, it is recommended that all communities comply with the governor's executive order for the protection of the residents throughout this public health crisis. And that is continue to wear a mask, get the 
social distancing and et cetera. It's, it's just so important. Many people are not taking this serious, but um, if you're watching the news, it's uh, the count is steady going up. Many people are still dying. Uh, people are getting the virus. So comply with the orders, wear your mask, social dis distancing, etc. I think our governor is doing a great job. But until everyone starts doing what they're supposed to do, we will never get this virus under control. Amen. Uh, reminders, if you have not completed your survey, please do so. It is our goal to ensure a complete and accurate count of everyone living in our region or in your household. Just a reminder, the food pantry every Wednesday starting at 930, 153rd and Page Street. All is welcome. And if you are not interested, if you know someone else that may be interested, please do so. I, I think Soaring Township has one of the best food pantry give outs uh, in this area. Seniors carry out lunches, Thornton Township uh, Senior Center, 1420 Huntington Drive, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Thank you all, and everyone be safe. Well, thank you, Trustee Graham, for that report and your information. The Public Works and Building Trustee Claybrook. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I only have a few things today. Um, Public Works has created the uh, alley on the east side of town for this past week. And uh, general maintenance and cleanup throughout the village. And also, as Mayor Polk said, we, uh, with the sidewalks, uh, the lanes would be out. We measured the sidewalks, and, uh, and we kind of estimated more than what we uh, would, would be afford, affordable to do. But uh, definitely put up anything we want to get done, we put on the list at a later date. And uh, Mr. Uh, Dwight Young, yes. did you get your uh, new water meter installed? Yes, I did. Working out for you, or well, I mean, the, the new water meter is definitely working, but as I stated, my issue is that right before the water meter was installed, um, I turned in a reading and then I received a four thousand dollar increase, which is just crazy. And I have all of my bills from when I purchased the property, I have all of my statements, even statements showing that I turned in a yellow copy reading. There definitely have been a reason before on the property. I am not here to try to get over on money or scam money at all. That is no way near my purpose. I'm here because I don't want the village to get over on me either. I've been paying all my bills. I have copies of all my receipts. Thank you for asking. That's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Clayton, for your report and that information on the resolution and planning. Trustee Garcia. In the absence of Trustee Cap, Trustee Richardson, would you take that under finance? Yes. Discussion of, consideration of, and taking action to approve or not approve on authorizing the payment of this month's bills and last month's bills. So would you make a motion? Would you have to? No, you need to read again for me. Oh, okay. I need to make a motion to approve or not approve on to approve on authorizing the payment of this month's and last month's bills. And have a motion approved by Trustee Richardson to approve the bills for this month and last month. So we have a second on that, please. A second. A second by Trustee Greer. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Clayton? Yes. A motion passed. Thank you. So we have on the finance of public appeals for Trustee Richardson. Good evening. Good evening. Just uh, announcement that CETA is still taking applications. If you need assistance with your utilities, that's your electric and your gas. And um, ComEd has a uh, program if you need assistance with your electric bill that you can contact them and get more information on getting assistance with your electric bill. That's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Richardson. For that information, Parks and Recreation Trustee Bond is absent this evening. Um, they had a presentation, petition, communication, memorial, so that's my
So this morning, I attended the service of Miss Mary Dabrowski, and uh, she was the oldest resident of the village of Burnham. She was 101 years old, but she lived a good life. And, uh, you know, she was a long time Burnham resident. You know, she attended Burnham School and all of that. So, you know, her family, you know, was very appreciative for the support that the village you know, has offered her the last couple of years. We had a, uh, a motorcade parade for uh, on May 17th. He participated and went to her house, so I'm mean, not knowing that that would be the last time, but she did enjoy it, and, and we enjoyed being there for her and for her family. So, again, Ms. Mary Brosky did pass away, so she was 101 years old. Also, we lost Mr. Heron, you know, who lived right behind Trustee Griff. Uh, I haven't heard anything about the detail, but he passed away as well. So, um, is there any unfinished business? Is there any new business? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Okay. There's a motion to by Trustee Garcia. We need a second, please. Second. Second by, mm -hmm. by Trustee Greer with her take the roll. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Piper? Yes. The motion passed. We need adjourn. Thanks for coming.